For just over six months in 1930, Joseph Pinzolo would be the boss of what would eventually become known as the Lucchese crime family. In a previous video, I've covered his life and eventual murder. In this video, I will look in more detail at Pinzolo's early career working for a Black Hand organization and expand on the events that led to his arrest for trying to blow up a tenement building that housed 40 families. In 1908, Joseph Pinzolo was 21 years old and working as a bomb thrower for a Black Hand organization in New York. Interestingly, Detective Charles Correo, a Sicilian who worked in New York City's Italian squad, would state in an interview that Italian criminals hated the term Black Hand or Mano Nera. He is quoted as saying, The real Black Hander hates that name as he does poison. He is of the Mafia. And to be known by any other name, even in his own imagination, is abhorrent to him. Detective Correo even stated that the idea of signing off a threatening letter with a black handprint actually came from a reporter and wasn't done initially by the criminals. Correo would recall to one newspaper, About nine or ten years ago, said Correo, a threatening letter was received by a certain man in Brooklyn. The man turned it over to the police. The letter was the usual blackmailing document in which the man to whom it was addressed was informed that unless he paid over a large sum of money to certain unnamed parties, he and his family would suffer. The letter was not signed, and there was no symbol or any sort at the end of it. It was given to the reporters to copy, and when they came to the end, one of them said it ought to have a name or symbol of some sort signed to it. They thought it over, and one of the reporters suggested that a black hand would look well in print. And the suggestion went. And, as a result, we have had the so-called black hand with us from that day on. As mentioned, in 1908, Joseph Pinzolo was working for a so-called black hand organisation, which was run by Calabrian by the name of Giuseppe Costabile, also known as The Fox. Costabile was described by one newspaper at the time as follows. He is an intelligent and even good-looking Italian, 29 years old, with black hair and shrewd blue eyes, and a dark brown moustache. He is 5 feet 4 inches in height and weighs 118 pounds. According to Detective Charles Correo in 1911, the police had been watching Costabile for six years. Therefore, from 1905, when he would have been 23 years old. And so, in 1908, when the 21-year-old Joseph Pinzolo was working for him, Giuseppe the Fox Costabile was 26. The Italian squad in the New York Police Department was headed by the legendary lawman, Lieutenant Joseph Petrosino, a man who was assassinated in Sicily in 1909, allegedly on the orders of crime boss Vito Cacioferro. In 1908, Joseph Petrosino assigned Detective Correo to a case involving Giuseppe Costabile's Black Hand Group, which was terrorising a businessman by the name of Francesco Spinella. Spinella had arrived in America from Italy in around 1890, according to Correo, and went into the painting business. He accumulated enough money within a few years to purchase two properties, 314 and 316 East 11th Street. Unfortunately, Francesco Spinella's success drew attention from criminal elements within his own Italian community, specifically Giuseppe the Fox Costabile. As Detective Charles Correo states, The Black Hand, as you call it, of course found out all about Spinella's prosperity, and he was but the police were not, surprised when he got a letter one day demanding $10,000. Spinella was game and refused to pay a cent of tribute. Instead, he came to the police and handed over the letters. Three times bombs were exploded in his houses. In one of the houses, all but six of his 32 tenants got out. But Spinella refused to give in, and we kept at work. 
As mentioned earlier, Joseph Pinzolo was working as a bomb thrower for Costa Bile. Although, at the time, Pinzolo was known by his birth name, Bonaventura Pinzolo. Detective Correo details how he identified Pinzolo as the weak link in the criminal operation in the following article. I knew that the man who throws the bomb is the weakling, while the big fellow, the one at the bottom of the business who supplies the brains and manufactures the bomb, never takes any chances if he can help it. The goat is always some weak-minded young fool whom the leaders have no trouble in making their tool. In disguise, Correo then travelled to the quarter where he knew many black-handers lived. He would recall of his investigation, I saw several that I knew to be of the gang, and I mixed with them. Among them was Bonaventuro, and the minute I looked into his poor weak face, I knew that he was just such a man as a smart bomb man would select to set the thing off. So I decided to follow Bonaventuro because I figured out that he was the weakest of the lot. On the night of the capture, I told Petrosino my plans, and Petrosino decided to go out with me. While shadowing Pinzolo, Correo saw him meeting with Giuseppe Costabile on First Avenue near Christie Street. Detective Correo would then outline how he arrested Pinzolo in the act of trying to blow up one of Francesco Spinella's properties. Petrosino and I went out and we came into East 11th Street where Spinella had his houses. It was not long before we picked up a Bonaventuro. Petrosino and I hid in a hallway where we could watch him. He passed by Spinella's house twice. The third time he went into the hall. And I knew that the moment was at hand. We ran to the house and entered just as Bonaventuro was setting off the bomb. I jumped on the fuse and put it out. And Petrosino drove the barrel of his pistol into Bonaventuro's cheek, the barrel going clear through, which explains why there is a bandage around Bonaventuro's picture in the gallery. Spinella heard the racket and came running out in his nightclothes with the shotgun in his hand. When Spinella saw Bonaventuro, he wanted to shoot him and I had to threaten him in order to keep him from doing it. Interestingly, there are other versions of how Pinzolo had a pistol pushed through his cheek. In another telling of the story, Creo states that Petrosino rushed at Bonaventura and such was the impetus of his rush that the revolver he held levelled before him went clear through the young Italian's cheek. And in other versions, Francesco Spinella is credited with the injury to Pinzolo. As one newspaper reported, As it was, Bonaventura had the muzzle of a pistol pushed through his left cheek by the infuriated owner of the house, Francesco Spinella, who has been a particular sufferer at the hands of the Black Hand. When Joseph Pinzolo was arrested, he had a letter on him addressed to Francesco Spinella. The letter, of course, was in Italian, but translated by one newspaper. New York, July the 15th, 1908. Great double carrion. For a long time we have written to you, but you have paid no attention to our demands. We have let you know as to what we are. We have exploded you so many bombs. We have destroyed your houses, and yet you do not come to terms. Now we will explode to you this other bomb, and see whether you will come to your senses. We shall not be satisfied until we have killed you and your family, and we will make sausage of you and put you in a barrel, great miserable that you are. Our gang is large, and we are all mafios. We swear to you that you will be destroyed, and that you will never rest in peace. And while you are alive, remember the black hand, and that while you do not send us money, we will never forget you. Brute carrion we will sign the black hand that will never forget you. Bonaventura Joseph Pinzolo was sentenced to two to five years in prison for the attempted bombing. And Detective Charles Correo was correct that Pinzolo was the weak link, as he provided the police with the name of Giuseppe Costabile 
as the man behind the terror campaign. It was reported, After his conviction, Correo says, Buonaventura confessed to the detectives that Costabile had given him the bomb together with a $5 bill and a letter to Spinella. However, Joseph Pinzolo refused to testify against Giuseppe the Fox Costabile in open court, fearing for his life. What's the use, even if you do send him away? Correo says Buonaventura insisted. Even if he should not be free when I am released, there are 14 or 15 others in the gang, and they will kill me the day after I leave prison. I have told you who the man is. If you watch him, you'll get him by and by. Giuseppe Costabile was arrested as a suspicious person, but was discharged in July 1908. However, the Fox was eventually caught and convicted three years later in 1911 and sentenced to two and a half to seven years in Sing Sing Prison for carrying explosives in breach of the Sullivan Law. Joseph Pinzolo would serve his sentence, coming out of prison not long after Costabile started his time inside. Pinzolo would continue his criminal career, where he would eventually become boss of what is now known as the Lucchese crime family. I hope you found that interesting. Till the next time.